Ja, You might remember Theo from the last video. This is Rosie, we're looking after her, so they might get some uh, cameos in this video. This week I am going to show you how to use an electric spinner, otherwise known as an e-spinner. I'm gonna put Theo down so I can <laughs> describe. So this was uh, an e-spinner that I got online. It was actually 3D printed, which is why I got it for around 100 USD or 150, I forget. Um, but it's much less costly than the wooden spinners. Um, and yeah, so it was in my price range and it kind of does the job. It makes it a lot faster than using the wooden uh, hand spinner. Uh, that I had before. So this is what it looks like. I'll just unplug it so I can show it around. So here's the on and off switch. Goes one direction and the other direction. The power. And then this is the speed of the spinning. And this is called the bobbin. So this is going to determine the speed at which the bobbin moves around um, and how fast you're going. Uh, so it comes with a little pin here, and this is to get the wall in and around. That is kind of, it's a nifty, it's a little magnet so you don't lose it. And then basically what we do here is I have a little bit of wall that I've tied around, and I just put it through one, kind of clips to one side, put it through the second one, and then pull it a little, bring my little hook, pull it through, there we go. So I'm going to turn it on to show you. And I have to plug it in. done that <laughs> so this is what it'll look like and then I can increase the speed goes about this fast very very fast um, and then we'll go the other way just to untwist it and so what the spinner is doing is it's adding the twist into the yarn itself um, in one direction or the other and that's how the yarn is made if you've seen any of my other videos. So now we're going to spin Theo's yarn. And of course you can do this with any other um, yarn but um, or any other fur, but I'm using Theo's and uh, I've learned from all the other videos that um, it's actually called Chingora, which is a special type of fur spinning that comes from dogs. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this is just some of the fur that I've been collecting. Um, it's only a little bit and um, yeah, hopefully he'll have a little bit more this winter. And this has been washed and now I'm going to card it with my two slicker brushes. If you need more of a tutorial, there's another video that I'll link in the description. So I just add the fur to one slicker brush and I don't do too much and then I take the second slicker and just brush it out like this. The idea behind this is you want to have all of the fibers going one direction so that when they spin together it's all not crinkly, there's no bumps. And I just keep going like this, 
transfer it on to the other one. And I still have not bought larger carding brushes because, I don't know, they've been a little expensive and this seems to do the job just, just fine for the amount of spinning that I do. So then I take it off. I end up with all the fibers going one direction. I put it on my pant leg and I just roll it, give it a little bit of a roll. There we go, we have a little roll leg, what it's called, and then I will use it to spin onto here. So normally I would do a few more and that would fill this bobbin, but I'll just do it for the purposes of learning. I'll do it now. So what I like to do is have a little bit of loose fur on the end or loose fibers just so it'll catch on and I normally just take it off of these, take it off of this once I'm done. So this is kind of like the yarn that lives on my bobbin. Just make it a little bit, a little bit loose at the end. And here we have the tension rods. You can see these sort of elasticy things. So we, I'll adjust these uh, along the way and that's sort of how much it goes in and how much it spins. So you can play around with that um, when you're spinning at first. So I'll turn it on. Oh, turn it on much slower because <laughs> I am not that good. So I just pull a little bit of that fiber out and I'll just turn a little bit, a little bit faster and it, uh, blends in with the yarn here. So what I do is it'll kind of pull it itself going in and then I pull out the yarn gently and have my right hand pulling the tension. So it sort of pulls back, it goes to an, an amount of string that I want and then I let go and it tensions it and adds that twist. Then I push it in and it will go on to the bobbin. So just pulling it out, let go of that, pulls it in, into the bobbin. And you can have this go faster the more practice you get. Sometimes I like to just watch TV and put it on low and slow and pass the time and yeah. So what you really want, and this is what I struggled with at first, was adding a little bit of too much or too little tension. So when I stop it, so this is about good. So when I stop it, it should go just like this and twist in and in itself. If it's too kinky when it does that, then it's a little bit over twisted. And if it won't do that at all, then it's under twisted. That's kind of how you know. And it will struggle to go back into the bobbin as well. I just keep pulling. And similar to the other video, just uh, play around with it and you'll get better as you go. So let's say it broke um, or I want to add, like I'm done with this row lag and I want to do the next one. So I go, oh no. So what I'll do is see that end. I'll just add the end back, put a little bit more of the fiber there and let it twist back on. Done. Easy, no one will ever know. And sometimes it gets a little bit more bumpy, but 
I just sort of rub that, rub it in and <laughs> move on to the next one because it's not perfect, but I'm just learning and it's all a process. So let's turn it a little faster here. Sometimes I like to switch hands, just give my other one a break. See, that's a, an example of it might be too twisted. See how it's a little too kinky? <laughs> it's not as nice. So what I'll do is just roll it out like this and it will sort of add the twist in an appropriate amount. And then I will add it back in. Oop. Yeah. And then I'll just add that to the next one, to the next row leg. And I'll just take a break. I usually pull it out, just keep it under there. And of course, you can, um, so this electric eel spinner comes with. Uh, holes so you can bolt it down. I haven't bolted it down just because I'm not that handy. I don't have a piece of wood. It was COVID when I bought this and um, yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, it doesn't pull off as much uh, and it's not super heavy, but it's weighted enough that uh, it doesn't really matter for me. So once that is done, I'll take this off and put it um, on my Nitty Naughty uh, and put it in the bathtub for 20 minutes, let the set, the spin set, and then uh, go ahead and, and knit it. So thanks for watching. Hope you come back again soon. Bye.